<laughs> well, that's one way to get fit. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today, we're not gonna be shaping up to the 70s, but we are gonna be using the Shaper Origin. We're gonna be using this tool to do some inlays on a monitor riser for a desk I'm building. So let's not waste any time and get started with this project. So if you saw my recent video, you know that I'm building a beautiful adjustable elm slab desk for my wife. And I'm really pleased with how that side table turned out. And in that video, you saw me create some beautiful exotic wood bow ties to stabilize the crack in that tabletop surface. And to create those bow ties, I used the Shaper Origin. So I thought it might be a good idea to take a closer look at how to make some inlays with this amazing tool. But first I need to tell you a little bit about my wife. She absolutely loves Disney. $45 for bedazzled mouse ears, baby. You want these or you want to go to college? In fact, she loves it so much that she even has a side hustle where she plans Disney trips. So I thought it might be a great idea to incorporate some Mickey Mouse ears into this desk I'm building her. So here's a rough look at the desk I'm building her. And I think this is going to be a great design with its naturally curved edges that will allow her to nestle up to that desk. And as I said in my previous video, I've been really impressed with this adjustable stand made by FlexiSpot. Even with this 100 pound slab on it, this thing moves with ease. So as you can imagine, I'm super excited to get this thing built so that she can use it on a daily basis. Picture someone doing something heroic. Now, was he sitting or standing? Not counting FDR. Every second you sit there is an hour off your life. Now this desk did come with a bamboo monitor stand which looks really nice, however I want this desk to be completely custom. So if you remember, I have one other piece of wood that was left over from that slab that I think would make a beautiful monitor stand. So this is the piece that we're going to be working with today. Now I'm no artist, but this is what I envision putting on this monitor stand. A set of Mickey ears right in the center front. Another thing to consider is how are we gonna raise this monitor stand? Well, luckily enough, the FlexiSpot comes with some hardware that I think we can repurpose for our own stand. So we have some work ahead of us, so let's get started and work on those Mickey Mouse inlays. So in order to do the inlays, I found a pretty simplistic design that I thought my wife might like. Now this design incorporates three colors, which is perfect because I'm once again going to use my three species of wood. I'm going to use some walnut, I'm going to use some mahogany, and finally some purple heart. Now one thing you'll notice when using the Shaper Origin is you may find a lot of JPEG files, but not an SVG file. The nice thing is there's a free software called Inkscape that allows you to switch a JPEG to an SVG file. And that's exactly what I did for this project. I found the JPEG file and then I converted it to an SVG using Inkscape. Now an excellent accessory to the Shaper Origin is the Shaper Workstation. This allows you to easily create inlays for projects without having to lay out Shaper tape for every single project. Now one of the first things that I like to do with the Shaper Workstation is to secure my stock. And you want to make sure that your stock is completely level with those dominoes. And I'm just going to secure this with some double sided tape. So the first thing that you want to do once your stock is secured is to do a new scan of your workspace. This is going to scan all the dominoes in front of the machine and figure out where your stock is relative to those dominoes. And once those dominoes have been scanned, they turn blue. You're my boy, Blue! And I always like to rotate the machine so that I can get the stock included as well. Once my workspace has been scanned, I now want to import my SVG file and size it appropriately. In this case, I want it to be three and a half inches tall. So I'll simply click import and then find my SVG file. In this case, it's the Mickey Shaper file. Now that that's been imported, it's way too large for this piece of wood. So I'm going to hit scale and adjust it to three and a half inches. Now that it's been adjusted, I can simply place it onto my workspace.
Now that I've placed that SVG file, I'm now going to start cutting around the exterior of that drawing. I'm going to make multiple passes, each about a tenth of an inch deeper. Another thing to consider is I'm going to be offsetting each one of these cuts at five one thousandths of an inch. Then on my last cut, I'll do it right on that line. In this case, I'm going to be cutting out the top of those ears. But before we do any cutting, I need to do a Z-touch. And the Z-touch is just to let your machine know where your drill bit is relative to your material. Now that we have all of our alignment set, it's time to trace out those ears. And this may be a little bit difficult to see, but you'll see ants marching in line. And this is what we're gonna follow to make our cuts. So I'm gonna get started and trace out those ears. Now that turned out quite nicely, so I just wanna pop this out and you can see we have our ears already. Now I did those ears in walnut, but I want the bottom half of the design to be in purple heart. So I need to set up my workstation for that purple heart. So I've got my purple heart installed and I'll repeat the same process for the bottom half of this design. Now that was a little bit more tedious, but I was able to get out the bottom part of that design. So I'm really pleased with how this design is coming together. The only thing we have left to do is to cut out the two buttons that will be made out of mahogany. So here I've set up my mahogany and I'm gonna cut out just a few buttons in case we make a mistake down the road. So here's a look at what we have so far. It was quite difficult to get those mahogany buttons in, but now that they're in, I don't think they're going anywhere. Now that we have the design established, we need to start thinking about creating a pocket for this inlay to set into. So the first thing that I want to do is to figure out how wide this thing is. And it's 34 inches wide, so I want to find the exact center at 17 inches and strike a line. Now that the center has been established, I can place my inlay where I want it to be and trace a line around it. It's this tracing that's going to give me an idea of where I want to place my SVG file when we go to lay out our workspace. It's now time to lay out our shaper tape, making sure that tracing is still visible. Now that we have our shaper tape laid out, we can scan our workspace. And hopefully you can see here, but our Mickey Mouse ears are right in the middle of our workspace. So I'm going to import our design and lay it right on top. Now I will have to adjust the scale to three and a half inches. Now that we have our SVG file laid right on top of that tracing, we can begin to pocket out the area for that inlay. And this is just a matter of removing all that waste material from the inside of our design. So I'm going to start that next. And just like before, we're going to do this at a tenth of an inch at a time. So here you can see the results of what we've just done. And because of the way the SVG file was set up, you can see that the buttons still remain. So I'm just going to get a chisel and remove those buttons. Now that we have all that waste material removed, I'm simply going to chamfer the bottom edges of our inlay so that they slide in easier. With our bottom edges chamfered, I can now add some wood glue and we can tap these in. With the wood glue still wet, I'm going to sand that inlay flush. The wood glue should grab onto any sawdust and fill in any gaps that we may have. So now that we've sanded that down a bit, let's take a closer look and see how it turned out. 
So here's a closer look at the results and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I really like the combination of exotic woods to make that Mickey Mouse ears. So now that the inlays are just about complete, we need to start thinking about how we're gonna add some feet to this monitor riser. So over here at the original bamboo riser, you can see I've removed the hardware that holds these legs. So really what we need to do is to create four circles to hold the four legs of our new riser. In order to create these holes on our new riser, we need to determine the depth of those circles as well as the diameter of those circles. And if I use a depth gauge, I can see that I'm right at 3 16 of an inch. So next up, I'll grab my tape measure and measure the diameter. And we're right at one and a half inches. So what we're gonna do now is use some of the on-tool functionality of the Shaper Origin. But before we do that, we need to flip our computerizer over on the other side. So with that monitor riser flipped over, I now wanna determine four spots where I want my legs. Every day is leg day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So what I'm gonna do is take a pocket rule and scribe a line at two and three quarters of an inch. This will allow a two inch overhang with an inch and a half diameter circle. Then I can approximate two and three quarters of an inch from the front and the back of the slab. And here I've added the legs to make sure that the dimensions look reasonable for this slab. Now that I feel comfortable with the placement of those legs, I can begin to lay down some shaper tape. And this time I'm gonna run diagonally across the slab, making sure I avoid all the points where my legs are gonna be. Once I have all that tape laid down, I can once again scan my workspace. And the nice thing about the shaper tape is it doesn't matter what direction it's facing, it'll still work as long as you can see that shaper tape. So now that we've scanned our workspace, you can see the little X, which is the exact center of where we want our circular hole to be. X marks the spot. X stands for danger. So what I'm gonna do is to place my cursor right in the center of that circle. Then I can hit create and hit circle. And since we know this circle has to be an inch and a half in diameter, I can hit start circle and create the diameter of one and a half inches. And once I'm done, I'll hit place. Now I'll repeat the process for the other three legs. And here's another example of how to create that circle. I'll line up my cursor to the center of that circle, then I'll hit create circle, and I can actually type in that diameter of one and a half inches, and then hit place. So now with all my circles placed onto that workspace, I can begin to pocket out my holes. And just like before, I'll do the Z-touch to start this process. So now that I have these holes bored out, you can see how nicely the hardware sits right into those holes. So now it's just a matter of attaching them with screws. With all that hardware installed, it's just a matter of screwing in the four legs. With the four legs installed, let's flip this thing over and see what it's gonna look like before I do some sanding and finishing. Well, I really like the way this has come together. I think this is gonna be a beautiful desk once it's fully assembled. So I'm gonna finish sanding this and put some finish on it and we'll take a final look. Now I got all the sanding done, so I'm not gonna bore you with that, but I did wanna show you the finishing of those Mickey Mouse ears. I really think those wood colors are really gonna pop once I hit it with some Rubio.
Well, I couldn't be more pleased with how this turned out. I really like the Mickey Mouse inlay and I think my wife will really appreciate it. I'm also discovering that elm is becoming my new favorite species of wood. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.